Okay. So uh, what we're going to do here, I'm gonna, let me reduce this over so I can, we can see everything. What we're talking about today is our iWave products and, and air quality in general, uh, but specifically uh, concerning iWave, the technology, how it relates to other technologies um, and so forth. So um, this is not a real long presentation, but like we said, if you have any questions, either hold on to it at the end or, uh, um, or, or uh, Nate will answer as, the, as part of the chat. So uh, I'm gonna get started here. There's basically three parts to indoor air quality. Um, particulate, which includes dust, dander, and pollen, pathogens and bacteria, and problem odors and VOCs. VOC stands for volatile organic compounds. So air filtration by itself, air filters, are passive technology. They're sitting there waiting for the air to come back and pass through and act as a catch-all. So uh, um, just keep that in mind. What we're gonna be talking about with the iWave technology really complements a good air filter and, and, and vice versa. So, uh, uh, but it starts with, with a, a, a air filter, which is passive technology. And if you think about it, how we clean our air, um, or how clean is our air, if you think about sun rays coming through a window, you can see lots of dust particulate just kind of floating stagnant in the air. We're breathing that stuff, and even, even the stuff that we can't see, and, and I'll get into that here in a second, but this is what we want to, one of the things we want to attack and target with our technology. So, if our focus is on uh, dust partic particulate, uh, there's what we call fine particulate, which has a um, parts per million of 2.5. And, and that, how does that relate? Um, there's a picture here, a diagram on this chart of a human hair and, 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 and how from a size standpoint, even parts per million of 10 and how parts per million of 2.5 uh, fit from a size standpoint compared to a human hair, the diameter of a human hair. So um, you cannot even see that fine of dust particulate. And that, that, that kind of particulate can be a combination of uh, combustion particles, organic compounds, metals, et cetera. Um, many are, have carcinogenic uh, issues potentially if, if breathed and, and, and come in contact with the inside of our lungs. So um, what we're what we're going to be talking about we can attack all these dust particulate clear down to this small that you so small you can't see it so in, in home exposure of of two and a half parts per million uh dust particulate is uh um not not at all uncommon um the next uh slide here is, it actually shows one of our ads one of our social media ads for that fresh um we are a chemical company. We uh, have always been a chemical company. Um, the, uh, uh, we, we've, we've approached into air quality from a variety of different angles, but we do believe it starts with the cleanliness of the air handler. Thus, uh, we've got a variety of chemical-based uh, products that can be used to clean and sanitize that air handler. Evapfresh is a good example. There's a picture of our gallon in our, in our aerosol can, and as you can imagine, you probably already realize this with your uh, customers, that. Uh, uh, Evapfresh has had quite a demand in the last four or five weeks, and it will continue, I'm sure, the way it looks. Here's another ad uh, um, to, to let folks know that our Evapfresh can actually use, be used in a spray bottle as a hard surface sanitizer, um, along with a coil cleaner. So it, it is EPA registered to kill a variety of different uh, viral organisms, including uh, various strains of the coronavirus. Um, it obviously hasn't been tested against this COVID-19 yet. Obviously, nobody has been able to test against it, um, but it will kill all these other viral structures. And then another point, we have another uh, product that we've been selling for ice machines for a number of years called IMS3 Ice Machine Sanitizer. This is actually the killing step, uh, the next step after using a descaling ice machine cleaner. But uh, we've made it, um, put the word out to a variety of folks looking for hard surface sanitizers that you can actually mix this product, comes in a pint, pint bottle, um, but 1.6 ounces of it with a gallon of water 
can be used as a hard surface spray on uh, EPA registered sanitizers. So, um, and it's got a lot of kill claims just like the, the Evap Fresh. So um, one other chemical product before we get back into the, the iWave, just to, to give you a bit of an idea of what we have available. Um, our BioFresh CD is a bacteriostat fungistat sanitizing product that uh, though it will not, is not registered to kill viral organisms, it is registered to kill um, just about every kind of bacteria that we know of, a lot of spore-based uh, organisms. So um, one of those other things that can help to control uh, indoor air quality problem issues. So we'll get back into air filtration being passive technology and some of the devices and technologies that have been, have been uh, uh, sold in our industry for a number of years. We kind of start with, with uh, um, the, the UV light bulb apparatus. Uh, again, it's a passive technology um, in that it only treats a space in the system and, and it's really more of a hard surface sanitizing product. So you can, eat, a lot of folks either mount them either above the evaporator coil or below the evaporator coil to try to keep that coil from having organisms grow on it. But it's very passive. It's not doing anything down downstream of that coil uh, in that system. So they are effective. They'll kill just about any kind of an organism, bacteria, viral organism. Um, the downside is they're very passive um, and they are only as good as the first time you install them and then it's downhill. Within say half of a year, they've probably lost 25 or more percent of their effectiveness. Uh, by a year, you've lost 50 percent or more and, and most of them only last a year to two years. So they may still light up, but that doesn't mean that they're doing anything. Um, again, they are specifically designed for as a passive technology to treat a surface where they are. Other air purification technologies that are a little bit more active uh, that uh, we, we compete with would uh, one, be, one be a uh, photocatalytic oxidation technology, which is pictured here um, on the far right, one of our competing units, as well as these units to the left. Uh, they would mount above the coil, above the plenum of the furnace, and uh, they do off-gas um, due to a, a chemical reaction. Basically, you're shining a, a UV light bulb on a metal-coated catalyst, and there are chemical reactions that off-gas different things like hydrogen peroxide, ozone, um, several other byproducts. Uh, they are more active technologies, but they have their limitations as well um, in that they do off-gas things that folks maybe don't want, like ozone, hydrogen peroxide, um, but they, they will kill organisms that they come into contact with. So uh, the downside to this technology, along with the fact that it off-gasses after chemical reaction, is that you do have an expensive light bulb to change within every two years because it's only as good as the first time it's installed. And then it goes, it degrades over time. So within a year, you're maybe 50% or less effective versus, versus when you first plug a new bulb in. So, and in this picture just shows the variety of different bulbs that are available on wholesaler shelves that we see all the time. Um, so bulbs are expensive. Not all homers like the idea or maybe are all that kink cued in as the fact that they're gonna have to replace bulbs on an ongoing basis, but it's, a, it's an ongoing cost. So you don't replace the bulb within a period of time. You basically don't have an air purifier, even if there's one installed. So what we're gonna talk about is the technology that we use with the iWave, and it has to do with cleaning the air naturally. So we're basically recreating artificially inside the living space um, ions that are present in the atmosphere. And to give you a little bit of a idea of these ions and how they factor in from a relativity standpoint, um, we'll give you some idea from a units of measure standpoint, ions are measured by cubic centimeter of space. So example, if you're near waterfalls, beachfronts, high elevation ranges, and you take an ion count with an ion counter, you're probably gonna be in the 5,000 range per cubic centimeter of space. Forest ranges, um, other similar areas, probably around 4,000 ions per cubic centimeter of space. If you go into a city center, say you go into Cincinnati, 
and you take an ion count, you're probably looking at somewhere around 200 ions per cubic centimeter. And then inside a building, it's under 100 ions per cubic centimeter, or quite less, quite a bit lower than that. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea from a frame of reference standpoint is what we're creating, what we're trying to mimic is areas where the air is cleaner, like your waterfalls, your beach fronts, high elevation ranges. So this technology is designed to catch particulate, kill bacteria and airborne pathogens, and help to eliminate odors with the power of, of oxidation. So how iWave works. iWave is an air purifying device that installs in any duct air conditioning system. When air passes over the iWave, ions are produced by the device, reducing pathogens, allergens, particles, smoke, odors in the air, and more, um, creating a healthy environment without producing any harmful byproducts. At no point do any of our devices, because the way they're designed, create ozone. So ozone is not part of the picture. iWave's patented technology we call needle point bipolar ionization. That's designed to create equal amounts of positively and negatively charged ions. So these ions are injected into the airstream and they'll break down passing pollutants and gases into harmless compounds like oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and water vapor. So underneath here is just a, an illustration. Um, we have a couple of emitters on our devices that produce equal amounts of positively and negatively charged ions. And we are actively, proactively, set, uh, the, the whole goal here is to saturate that supply space at all times with these ions so they can do, or do their thing. So how do we catch particulate with these ions? Again, back to that picture uh, of, of dust particulate floating in the air through sunways, sun rays in a, uh, uh, near a window. Um, how do we catch that? Well, the, the positively and negatively charged ions that are being produced like I may have someone admit to admit here. Let me, uh, let me pull them. That's one of our guys. Okay, so I'll continue. The, uh, the ions that are produced that are saturating this supply space are clinging onto both dust particulate organisms, bacteria, uh, viral organisms, etc. Um, and when they cling onto these, 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 say the dust particulate, that charged ion becomes attracted to other charged ions that clung onto other dust particles that would have never touched each other, and they become, they, they, they magnetically attract to each other and clump up. And when they clump up, they become heavy enough to where they're going to have more of a chance to, let me get to my next slide. So that these clumps, as they, uh, as they cling together, they gain weight and they either get heavy enough to get picked up by the return airflow and hopefully sucked into the air filter, or they just, by gravity, fall to the surface. And this is an example of an air filter. Uh, one of our guys uh, down in the southern part of the country, his wife likes to burn candles, still wants to burn candles, even with uh, their, uh, their eye wave in place. And uh, this gives you an idea what their filter looks like in about a month. But uh, it does, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, this technology really complements a, a, a decent air filter. So as long as you've got airflow and you've got a good catch-all, um, we suggest at least a Merv 8 pleated filter. Um, you're going to get much more buildup on your filter. How do we kill bacteria and airborne pathogens with this technology? So this is just a chart that shows oxidizing substances produced by iWave, by the bipolar ionizer. Um, when the ion, uh, bipolar ions are in the airflow, we produce both positively and negatively charged ions, which form what we call radical hydroxyls. And those, those, those hydroxyls adhere to airborne viruses, inhibiting the ineffectivity um, the infectivity of the airborne virus. Um, and with a, a standard oxidation potential of 2.81 volts, 
um, which is the strongest oxidation method available um, in our industry, uh, it's, it's the most effective technology available. So the high oxidation ability um, and chemical reaction decompose the protein um, on the surface of the bacteria and other pathogens which inhibit their activity. So if you look at the chart below, the hydroxyl radical that we're forming, actually 2.81 volts. If you compare that to other things in our industry uh, that are being pr produced by other technologies, look, ozone's 2.07 volts. Hydrogen peroxide, which is a byproduct or an off-gassing of uh, PCO technology, that's 1.78. Hydroperoxide, 1.7. And just an oxygen molecules, 1.23. So um, we have the highest, the highest potential for attacking an organism and killing it with our, with our hydroxyl radicals that are formed with positively negatively charged ions. And just to create a little bit more of a illustration here, the next slide, um, if you look to the left, that is the, basically the body of an organism. Let's say it's a viral organism. And these positively negatively charged ions are surrounding it and, and attacking it and basically trying to pull the hydrogen molecules out of the organism, which are both their, their protection as well as their lifeblood to get to the proteins in the, in, in the inside. So think about it like cracking an egg. Uh, once you crack the shell of the egg, the, the goo comes out. This is basically a good analogy for what we're accomplishing with this chemical reaction. But as, as that reaction takes place, the, the hydroxyl radicals pull the hydrogen molecule out of the organism. And, and what, you're, what you're left with is no, 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 no structure to protect these proteins and the organism dies very quickly. And the only byproduct here is when you're pulling a hydrogen molecule with these hydro hydroxyl radicals out, you're forming water vapors. So hopefully everyone that's watching can see this. Um, if you ever have a question uh, and we want to discuss it more, feel free to let us know, let one of us know. Uh, all three of your, your new Calgon uh, account managers are, are on this call. So I'm going to move along. So we've done a lot of independent testing or had independent testing done with, uh, with a, a couple of different labs. And uh, this is just a study of common pathogens uh, that include E. coli, MRSA, tuberculosis, norovirus, and C. diff. And exposure time to um, our, our technology, our positively negatively charged ions be produced with our iWave technology. You can see with exposure time what the kill rate's like. So tuberculosis is a little tougher, harder organism to, to crack, takes a little bit longer. So it's not quite as high a percentage, but on average, it's around 96% on the kill rate um, with, with, with various organisms. So our devices are basically designed to take polluted air and turn it into clean, clean air. And again, it's a, it's a very proactive, active technology. Again, here's, a, here's another ad that we created. Uh, um, and it, it, as you see these ads that I've put up on this presentation, um, we can provide these to you and your customers if they want to run them on their social media. Um, that is, that's really what they're designed for. So um, this one is on the iWave technology and uh, um, having, a, having to do with the coronavirus and, and, and how it can be a very effective way of, of attacking as organisms. So, and then the last portion here is uh, how do we eliminate odors with, with iWave? So, chemical compounds, um, plasma that can, can easily control, and another word for our, for our, our positively negatively charged ions is, is cold plasma. Um, so, we've got this list here of, of different chemicals and, and what their, their electron volt. Uh, rating is for each one of those chemicals. So VOCs with ionization potential um, uh, under, from an electron volt standpoint, less than 12.07 can be addressed with ion generators. So all of these are under 12.7. So oxygen's 12.7, but all these other others are, are listed as from a volt, electron volt potential are under 12.7. So that means that we can control and kill them or eliminate them, break them down with, with with the ion technology that we're talking about.
And this is just a, uh, another illustration here. This is a, a hospital down in North Carolina that was treated with this technology. And what's funny here is, so there's a, there's a, a diesel generator there and that diesel generator runs, when it runs, the exhaust fumes actually get sucked into, back into the hospital with the out, outside fresh air coming in. And when they installed this technology, there's a chart here at the top, it kind of gives you an idea once it was installed, it drove down the VOC counts from that exhaust gas coming into the hospital. So that's basically in layman's terms what, what, we, what we're showing here just a, a, a downturn of those, those, those VOCs from that diesel exhaust being broken down with this technology. Another uh, little study that we did, we, we took a PCO unit that we compete with and, uh, and, and compared it to our iWave technology from a dust particulate reduction standpoint. So this is a residential application. Um, the, the, the competing PCO device was installed above the plenum of the furnace in a four, with a four inch hole, three or four inch hole. And uh, um, they ran this, operated with the clo house closed up for two solid weeks. And next to it, you can see what the parts per million dust particulate counts with a counter um, recorded. So at 0.3 microns, we have over 10,549. This is after two weeks at two and a half microns, 171, and that, and after, after two weeks at five microns, 151. So that had a, a MER 14 pre-filter in place. So we removed that device after two weeks and installed the iWave C, which is our commercial unit um, and fits perfectly right in that, that same slot. So it makes it very much a, a similar test where we're, 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 treat, we're, measure, we're measuring a count of dust particulate that uh, is treated just downflow of the coil. So um, after 24 hours of the iWave C in place, here are our results. So 0.3 microns that pulled that from 10,549 down to, um, down to 2,543, 2,543, two and a half microns down to 55 from 171 and five micron count down to 38 from, from a prior count of 151. So here to the right, you can see the percentage change just within 24 hours. So this just illustrates how much more effective this technology is versus PCO photocatalytic oxidation at removing dust particulate from the air. And it's all because of the ions that are produced. So we're saturating that space with, with a high concentration of ions and, uh, and, and, and then reducing that dust particulate in the space. So that's less dust particulate in that living space for the inhabitants to actually breathe. If you think of somebody that's maybe got breathing issues, uh, maybe an asthma, uh, COPD type issue, maybe a child with cystic fibrosis, this is a great technology for those, those kinds of situations. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next slide. So another thing that, uh, that, that, that this is a very great technology to um, in, in enhance and improve is the, the need for outside air by code. So this is just a, a slide that talks about the ASHRAE 62.1. This is more commercial but we wanted to point it out just because it is rare, it's very relevant. So um, the ASHRAE 62.1 indoor air quality um, re outside air requirement has to do with a rule of thumb of about 10 CFM per building occupant of fresh air reduction is in, depending on the application, non-medical or um, the air pressure of the building, but they want to achieve about 10, 10 CFM per person fresh air reduction. And um, our partner company uh, with, with the iWave is, is a company called Global Plasma Solutions. They do the commercial bid spec stuff out there. This is just one of their, uh, their, their, their engineering forms. And, and they, it, it points to uh, the IAQ procedure for outside air uh, quantity defaults, reducing it down to five CFM per building occupant. 
So we can bring it down that far with this technology. From an installation standpoint, there's been over a thousand installations in K through 12 schools um, with, with outside air quality reduced down to five CFM per, 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 per student and counting. Um, many healthcare applications, including hospitals, outpatient centers and offices. And uh, um, we've had over, over 200,000 installations of iWave up to this point. So um, this technology is very, very prevalent. And as people gain understanding of how it works, it's becoming a, a go-to technology because like I said earlier, no bulbs, no ozone's produced, there's no off-gassing of other things. It's a very safe technology and very effective at dust particulate reduction. Other no some, some notable installations here, um, the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, Cleveland Clinic in uh, Florida, um, Methodist Hospital in, in Houston, Texas. I'll kind of go down through the list. If you know, about halfway down, we say the White House. This technology was installed in the White House um, somewhat recently. And uh, um, so the, the, the capital of, of, the, of the country that runs the whole world basically has this technology in place. So uh, these are just from our website, some, some, some of many of our uh, um, nice testimonials, kind of a cross section. So the top one is a service manager for a heating and air company. Um, and he, he points out, not only are they having success with it, but just as his own home situation with his wife who has bad allergies, uh, improved her breathing and her, how she does inside their home, um, 90 to 100%. Um, Planned Pet Hood Plus, which is a veterinary hospital that's on uh, Animal Planet, often has been treated with this as well. And they had a big problem with urine odor, urine smell, um, and reduced it all but completely within 24 hours of install the iWave technology. Um, and then the bottom one's an engineer uh, that, that kind of uh, hits on commercial applications and health benefits uh, that they appear to be well worth the cost. So um, these are just a cross section, a few different testimonials that we use, and, and there's more on our website. So I'm gonna get into the products, the models, a little bit and uh, we'll try to make sure everybody's got a good comfortable understanding of, of how these work and how they're installed actually. So um, the first model is our Iway V. This is actually our, our first unit uh, before the R came into uh, availability. Uh, but the Iway V is a, it's a, it's an Iway ion uh, generator that's designed for up to six tons. So the same size as our iWave R. It installs very quickly and, and has different, a variety of different mounting options. Uh, it's magnetic base as well, like the iWave R. It's a small compact design with no replacement parts. Um, it'll do all the things that we have talked about, that I've talked about in this presentation. Um, and it is UL and CUL approved with a three-year warranty. The only, uh, if there's limitations to this is if you notice on here these transmitters are fixed they they do not remove so these 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 both these two emitters the positive and negatively charged emitters do not remove from this device and they also don't self-clean so you need to actually um, visually inspect them periodically and either clean them off with some compressed air or a soft bristle brush many just blow them off uh, but they do need that does need to be addressed periodically with these if you get dust particles that set on these um, not only does it inhibit how the product works, it'll affect the, uh, the performance of the product, but it, it will also jeopardize the emitters themselves. So, and like I said, you cannot change these out. This is also a 24 volt only device. You can only hook it up to 24 volts. From a standpoint, there's an example of where you would place one of these on a blower housing. So one thing I'll point out with all these devices, you want your airflow flowing over your emitters evenly. Picture a football going over goalposts. You want the air flowing it evenly. So with this device positioned here on the, the blower fan housing and the air sucking in inward, it's basically pulling these ions inward evenly into that housing. And then it's, they're forced up through the coil into the supply space. 
So that's one example. Our iWave R is our, by far our most popular device um, to date. And it's, uh, it's probably the most popular for residential applications. Um, it's a patent pending self cleaning device. So unlike the, the, the V, it actually has a self cleaning mechanism. I'm uh, moving my, my pointer over the, the, what looks like a helicopter head. This is our wiper bar. So every, every three days, this device is set to oscillate over these emitters and knock the dust off of them, any, any kind of dust that could be sitting off. So basically self cleans, making this a no maintenance device. It's designed for up to six tons for 2400 CFM. Um, it e easily installs like, like our other units in minutes. Um, universal mounting with magnets like the V. So it's got magnets on the base and many just use the magnets. They're very strong, they'll hold it in place. Um, the flexible design with no replacement parts. There is an alarm contact option for secondary notification. So basically when this is powered on, there's a little green light on the end of it that lights up. I'm just pointing at it right now. Um, but in most cases, this is, a, this is hid away inside the system where the building occupants can't see it. The homeowner can't see it. So if uh, there's two red wires along with a black, green, and a, and a white wire um, that are coming out the end of this for hookup, the two red wires are kind of optional. But if you stick a 24 volt LED light bulb on the end of these two wires, they'll mimic the same effect of the green light, the power light to show that it's powered on. Now, many don't use them, but that's an option that's available for folks that wanna see that that unit's working. And I, at the end of this presentation, I'll, I'll pull back out of the, the PowerPoint where you can see me again, and uh, I'll pull my iWave R out and show you a couple of those features. So here's, from an install standpoint and an upflow furnace, you're basically gonna just position the unit on the base of the blower compartment. Again, the magnetic base, it's gonna stick in place and you want it to set up so that the airflow flows over those emitters like a football over goal post. Just pick, some, pick those ions up evenly and then sucks them into the blower housing. Here's another option from a mounting standpoint. So if you have the space, this is a great spot to put it. Um, just stick it on the inside sidewall, right on the right on the end, where the air is going to pull those emit those ions right off the emitters into the blower fan housing. So there's a vertical installation. Also, I'll point out there if you notice there's a uh, you can you can mount these from the outside if you don't have the space on the inside of the unit with a three inch hole. You have a gasket here that uh, and mounting tabs that allow you to do that. The next device is our iWave C, which is our commercial air cleaner, um, where the iWave R is designed for up to six tons. The C can be used to both in residential and commercial applications, and it provides 4,800 CFM or 12 tons of uh, performance. So like the uh, iWave, R, it has a self-cleaning wiper mechanism on it that actually turns and, and self-cleans every five days. Um, it includes a waterproof housing, so you can actually mount this outside on a rooftop unit. And from a voltage standpoint, um, I didn't mention this on the, the R, the, the, the R and the C both have um, universal voltage, so you can actually hook them up from 24 volt clear up to uh, 240 volt and I'll use an example. I've got mine plugged into the, I, the EAC terminal on my unit, uh, which was open, so that's 110. But they'll operate the same regardless of which voltage you have them plugged into. Um, this one has that programmable cleaning cycle. We say programmable is in, in the instruction. With this and the R, you can change the, the, the cleaning time interval. Um, you could go down to one day. You could go up as high as 10 days. But most, I think, go with a factory preset. It's going to keep them pretty clean. Here's an example. I'm going to show you a couple of different mounting examples of the commercial iWave C. Uh, this is on a rooftop unit. And if you can see here, your airflow on this one is going is vertical. So it's up and down. 
um, that's basically how you want to have it positioned in the airflow, like see, like you see here. It's also important to note that if you're going to run um, power outside of the whip that comes with these, you want to have at least an 18 gauge wiring that you're going to power it with. This that would include the other units as well. You don't want to go smaller than 18 gauge. Here's another example of a multi-unit application um, of the iWave C's. So this is a commercial application. There's four of them here, and uh, you want to be up at least six feet apart or so in the in the installation of these. Um, I just I've been talking like the last several weeks with a variety of folks that are looking for commercial applications, and even the largest systems we can we can actually handle up to. Um, um, 20, 30, 40, 50 units. I, I did one uh, recently, uh, had a look and we sized it to, um, I think 25, 26 units for one air handler and they were just gonna space them in the supply duct um, accordingly to where the, the spaces they were gonna treat. So here's just another example. This is very flexible. Um, then the final product that we're gonna talk about is the iWave M. This is our flexible um, iWave bar that it looks like a dog, dog collar here, but it's actually a, a straight 18 inch flexible uh, design that has uh, multiple positively negatively charged emitters down that, that run down this, this strip. And it has a Velcro backing and it will give you treatment up to a 36 inch wide coil. You can use it on ductless mini splits. PTAC applications. Um, it'll basically do up to three tons from a uh, capacity standpoint, uh, but it's ideal for these types of applications where you get a small spot and you want to Im improve the performance or the, the air quality in that living space, as well as keep the inside of that unit rather clean. It's not gonna allow organisms to grow inside that unit. So from a powering standpoint, flex flexible voltage from 110 to 240, um, and then again, like our other uh, applications, we have UL and CUL approvals and a three-year warranty. So here's just an illustration of the iWave M installed on a ductless mini split. And as you can see, we have it mounted um, on the back wall, just on the inside of the wall plate, uh, right below the air intake, right below the filter screen. That's a perfect application for, for this from a, from a uh, installation standpoint. And then, the power pack is also Velcroed in inside the housing. So um, there's a couple of different ways of, of powering these. Uh, Piggyback it into the power supply. It's going to use, it's going to draw no more than five watts, but uh, avoid atta uh, attaching this power wire to the communication point for it. So depending on the manufacturer, that can vary. On this one, it's set up on the one and the two, but some would require that you set up on the, say, the one and the three. So um, just depends on the, the manufacturer uh, and, 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 and follow the instruction, but it's a really simple installation. And the nice thing about this, because it's got a Velcro backing, when you go to clean one of these units, you can basically peel it off and let it hang to the side and not worry about getting any water or cleaner on it. And then take compressed air uh, or uh, a soft bristle brush to blow off the emitters if they look like they've got any dust buildup. So iWave is a technology um, that can be used year round. Uh, this just basically kind of goes through our full year seasons and we're, we're, we're kind of exiting the influenza season, the, the flu season, getting into pollen and allergy um, through the, the spring months. And then summer's gonna bring us molds and then fall sweaty smells. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a technology for the whole year. It's not gonna be just partial year application. From a marketing standpoint, we have a variety of different uh, tools. Uh, we have our website and, and we, we urge those to share it with the homeowner. Um, if, if nothing else, share the video, the little two, two minute homeowner video, um, which is a YouTube link. Um, great for contractors to show on their social media, their websites, uh, great to share because it's, it, it basically explains all this technology uh, in layman's terms so that the homeowner can understand it and often they want it. Um, from a 
website standpoint, we also have testimonials. Um, we cover our warranty and where to buy. I'll, I'll, cover, I'll talk about the warranty for a second. So um, our warranty section has, it, we, we're really adamant that because we don't sell this to be sold online or directly, we can't control that from, from, from the standpoint of who's buying it and putting it online. But what we can control is our warranty. So um, if we have somebody that buys one online and calls into our home office search, searching for information on warranty, the first thing we're going to ask is, number one, are you a licensed contractor? And if not, was it installed by a licensed contractor? And we need written proof that it was or there's no warranty. Uh, the where to buy section has to do with our uh, contractor locator. So we, we basically have a zip code contractor locator that uh, if you have a customer that would like to be on that session, that, that section listed there, um, we can get you a, a uh, iWave website locator form for the contractor to complete and send back to us and we'll get them added on. Um, and then from a, from a program standpoint, um, we have literature support. Right now we're uh, kind of hamstrung a little bit in that we cannot send the literature because our, our home office people, our office staff are working remotely from home. So we're probably another month out or so as far as getting actual literature. But uh, myself, Nate, Alex, we can all make sure to, that you have the PDFs for literature available for folks that want to print their own. Um, we can do trainings once things open up if you want to have on-site trainings with customers we can come in we can actually do the demo um, our smoke demo that we show on the video uh, we can do that for your customer as part of a training and so forth so um, we also have other marketing uh, materials that are available um, if you want a special flyer or uh, maybe you have a customer i'd like to have a little uh, social media custom social media thing get with us and we'll we'll work with you to to, and our marketing team to, to make that happen. The iWave uh, technology is designed to catch particulate, kill bacteria, airborne pathogens, and eliminate odors with the power of, of oxidation. So um, I'm going to open this back up and unmute here in a second. Let me close this portion of of this and I'm going to unmute all. Dave, have you been able to answer questions on uh, chat? Yeah, I've been answering questions, maybe. Okay. Now that I have it opened up, have any questions? So I have one of our iWave R's here, and I actually have it plugged in, so um, I'll power it on. You may want to mute everybody, they want to talk. Okay. 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 So I've got everybody muted, but uh, just to, to, to eliminate the background noise. Um, here's the iWave R, and, and I do have it turned on. And a couple of things from, from, from a troubleshooting standpoint, uh, we recommend that the first thing you check, if you're a contractor and you want to make sure that this is working, obviously, if you see the light on, that's, that's the, the first thing. But uh, the next thing is uh, take a non-contact tester like this and hold it over the unit. And obviously, it's going to pick up up the, the ions that are being produced and 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 that's basically one of your where your easiest ways of, of testing so this one's I think you guys sell this one this is a field piece non-contact tester but that's an easy way of uh, of double checking that the, the unit is actually working the way it's designed um, the self-cleaning mechanism I just push the button next to the, the power light um, the self clean cleaning mechanism you can actually run that through a manual phase and you can see it running over the emitters. So that's basically what it does every three days. And that can be changed incrementally to one day, five days, seven days, or 10 days as well. Most just leave it at three days. How do you change it to the different settings or different five days, seven days? You hold down, you hold down the, 
the, the button on the end of it for to, to, to change that interval. And it just depends on which one of those settings you want to have it on as to how long you're going to hold it down. It'll flash for how many days it's going to do. Okay. So it's very, very simple. I'm going to power this back off because I'm going to show you another feature here. So it's turned off. Take a Phillips head screwdriver. And if you notice, the emitters on this are just held in by Phillips head screws. So I'm going to remove one of them. Just remove the small Phillips head screw. And as you can see, I've taken the screw out of it. There's a sleeve that kind of holds it in place. I'll remove that, I'll remove that sleeve. And if, as you can see here, the emitter just pulls out. So it just basically unplugs out of the unit. Oh, uh, these emitters are carbon fiber based and they're designed to last a really long time. I mean, they should last the life of the unit, but there are cases where either someone either drops one of these mechanisms and breaks or damages the emitter. Um, if, that, if that happens, let us know. We'll set a, send a new set out at no cost. But it's that simple to remove the emitter from it. If they break a wiper bar dropping it, it's either, depending on which unit, this is one of our early units, got a little cotter pin in it, but the new ones have a have a small screw and bolt, a, a small uh, bolt and nut on them to, to easily remove that mechanism. Those are available for replacement as well. That's really the only thing that's going to go wrong, could go wrong with this device, unless unless it gets submerged in water with a flood or something, which obviously would not be part of the warranty. Now, is that something Corkin will stock? No, I wouldn't. I. I, I've probably only had one set that I've had to replace out of thousands of units sold. So I would suggest if you have that situation where somebody says, hey, I've got an emitter or a wiper bar that's uh, broken, either contact us uh, and we'll get a replacement sent out quickly. Or um, if, you have, if you have these products in stock, maybe rob one from an existing unit and have us get it replaced and, and, so that you can put it back on the shelf. So. Um, it's really simple. Shouldn't be, shouldn't really be an issue moving forward, but if it is an issue, let us know. Okay. Any other questions? What's the expected lifetime on these? I mean, there's a three year warranty. Yeah, I see that, but you know, if a customer is asking, you know, three year warranty, got it, but what on average are these supposed to last before we need to change them out again? It's probably safe to say the life of the equipment. Um, we're expecting at least 10, 15 years out of them. Okay. So if something happens, especially much sooner than that, get with your, your new Calgon salesman, whether it be me or Nate or Alex, and uh, um, we'll work with you to number one, figure, try to figure out what, what happened with it. And, and then we'll move forward to try to make sure that if it's a, if it's an issue, if it's in within warranty, we'll replace the device. Yeah. If, it's, if it's outside of that warning, we want to talk. We don't want to leave somebody hanging, but let's, let's talk about it. Okay. Um, one thing I didn't point out here is, so here's the two red wires that are optional. So a, a small 24 volt LED light bulb on the end of these two um, would make it so you can actually mount that power light outside of the unit. Again, most probably don't do it. Either they clip them off or they uh, roll them up and, and, and not use them. But that's an option if you've got somebody that has to see the, that, the, that the unit is on. Because they're not going to see it if it's in their furnace. I mentioned earlier about, water, uh, about air filters. Um, so a good, a good air filter is going to complement this technology. And there's a lot of folks that still use one inch filters. If they're using and one inch pleated filters. I wouldn't go um, throwaways, but I'd le at least have a pleated filter in place. Um, if this is installed and they keep their, their constant airflow in the home so that, that this device works at the way it's designed, they're probably going to want to change that filter within a week. That's how much particulate it's going to get picked up. So within a week, they're going to want to change that air filter. If it's a four inch filter or a larger filter, I've got a, an April Air four inch in my system. Um, 
and it's if, if you, as, as long as that filter is relatively uh, in good shape, somewhat clean still, you can probably get several months out of it. It's just, uh, I would uh, suggest on anybody using a one inch filter, change that out after a week of install and then probably change it monthly if they're gonna stick with one inch. So you should have your blow up motor run constantly? Uh, that, uh, that's really optimal. To, we, we suggest in order to keep a saturation point of ions in that supply space. So this, this device, this IOA of ours putting out 160 million ions per cubic, in a, per cubic centimeter per second um, into that living space. If you don't have airflow, it's only basically creating those ions where it is. So the airflow picks those ions up and forces them into the, in, into the airspace. Again, it being an active product, you want to have air movement in order to make it really work. With variable speed systems, you automatically have that issue. I have an ECM motor that I installed in my unit back in 2013, so I just leave it on. Any other questions? Is there okay. any is there any common questions that we haven't asked you yet that come up? Uh, no, not really. You've kind of gotten the main ones. Nate, do you have any, is there anything that I missed that, that, that maybe uh, we should make sure they know? Uh, no, you hit the, um, I was waiting for the, uh, the non-contact voltage sister. Uh, Alex was texting me on that. So uh, thanks for getting that in there. But no, I mean, these things really, you know, the one thing that I think contractors are shocked with guys when we, when we talk to them is how easy these really are to install. Um, they'll put these in. And, and we always get, um, I'll turn on my video, uh, that we always get, that, that's it. And we're like, yeah, I mean, the magnets will hold these where they need to go. Um, putting them inside that blower cabinet, um, they, the magnets stay, they, they don't move around. And, and there's really not a lot for these guys to do. Um, you know, the other big question we always get, and, and, and I haven't seen it is, you know, really, how do I know it's working? And we really focus on the smells, you know, even with the UV light, all they see is that glowing bulb. So there's a lot of, um, I talked to a guy last week, he said, oh, I've had my UV bulb for six years and he never changed it. And we all know on this call that if you've had it for six years, there's no way that it was doing anything after six years, but it still lit up. So he assumed that it was still a good, uh, viable, um, you know, unit and he didn't do anything with it. So uh, you know, with these, what we just have to do is educate people the difference. So that's real. That's really the two cents that I have to say. Any, anything else, Andy? I would just reiterate that our, our biggest selling point, we, we're not here to knock other technologies. Other technologies do what they do. Um, but we think we have a big advantage in that. Number one, there is no, no replacement bulb with this. There's no bulb on it. So there's no sticker shock to customer every two years that has a, a, maybe a competing technology. Or if they do complain that they are tired of spending $300 every two years for a new bulb, this might be an op excellent opportunity to get an iWave installed and just move forward. They don't have anything else to do, especially if they put an, an iWave R in place, it self cleans. So there's no maintenance to it. That's, that's a huge selling point. And uh, maybe you have somebody that does like having the option of offering a light bulb assembly, that's fine. Uh, uh, but have this technology on the other um, as 180 degree difference to offer them in case they, they realize, oh, that ozone, I don't like the smell of ozone, or I, I, don't, I don't want a light bulb assembly that I have to have change, a bulb changed every, every two years. So um, this, this is, because it self cleans, it's always at 100% production all the time, as long as there's air flow, and they're not gonna have to worry, really worry about any other issues? Any other questions? Well, I think we'll, uh, we'll look to wrap it up. If, if, if there are any other questions moving forward, feel free to contact myself, Nate, or Alex, and uh, we'll definitely get with you. We're, we're hoping that things open up here in the next few weeks where uh, we can get out and see everybody again and, and do our thing. But uh, um, let us know if any, any questions pop up. And uh, we, we really appreciate that you brought, you, you tuned in with us today. And uh, um, have a good week.
and we'll look to hearing from you in the near future. Thanks all. Thank you.